Tesla did it. Tesla is finally joining the S&P 500. It was close to make that happen in the summer, but it took a little bit longer. Let's talk about it and to other significant headlines coming out this week for investors. So in the summer, we talked about how close Tesla was to be included in the S&P 500. We went over all the requirements they needed to meet and how that decision was being made. However, that decision was delayed. As of this week, it's official. Tesla is joining the index and they will be part of the biggest 500 companies on December 21st. Of course, shares of Tesla surged after the announcement. This is a historic milestone for Elon Musk and one that will also lead to billions and billions of dollars worth of Tesla shares changing hands as index managers buy the stock. Based on Tesla's size at its current valuation, it will be among the S&P 500's 10 largest companies. It will probably take the number 9 or number 10 spot. Passive funds will have to buy around 95 million shares with active managers bringing the total add to around 125 million shares. According to the S&P Dow Jones indices, Tesla's addition will generate one of the largest trades in S&P 500 history. So if you're one of those investors who cannot handle the Tesla roller coaster and do not believe in buying individual stocks like me, you will soon own a piece of Tesla. As long as you hold any variation of the S&P 500 index fund, you will own Tesla in the right proportion to its market capitalization. So, what does it mean for Tesla to get into the S&P 500? Let's talk about that for a second. It is treated as a proxy of the US equity market. The index covers approximately 80% of the available market capitalization. The inclusion in the index is huge for Elon Musk. It is a recognition and a testimony that he has managed to make a huge impact by bringing electric vehicles to the market. But also the second aspect is the great buying and selling that is happening which would impact investors one way or another. Research shows though that after about a year in the index, companies tend to decrease in value and trail behind. In other words, nothing is certain. We don't know if Tesla's price will always be going up once it's in the S&P 500. There is no guarantee. However, what is certain is that all the various S&P 500 offerings and similar index funds have no choice but to include it. Additionally, actively managed funds that benchmark their performance to the S&P 500 will be forced to decide whether to buy Tesla shares. Even if you don't like Tesla and you think it's overvalued, the fact of the matter is that it's going into the index that would indeed mean trillions of dollars would be invested in Tesla. Speaking of the S&P 500, the biggest investor of all time, Warren Buffett, and his performance is often compared to the S&P 500's performance. This week, he also made the news because he made somewhat surprising investments recently. Namely, Berkshire Hathaway bought big cap pharmaceutical stocks like AbbVie, Bristol-Myers, Merck, and Pfizer, it also established new positions in T-Mobile and Snowflake. The last two specifically are quite unusual for Buffett. If you follow Warren Buffett, you know that he does not invest in things he doesn't understand. And usually, he's not focusing on tech. But buying T-Mobile and Snowflake specifically, this is huge. This is a definitely shift in his philosophy. And it's very likely that these are not his decisions, but the people he trusts with part of his portfolio. So if we take a look, Buffett bought almost 30 million of Bristol Myers, 21 million of AbbVie, 22 million of Merck, and 3.7 million of Pfizer. Not huge amounts compared to the amount of cash Berkshire has at the moment, but a definite statement and confidence in healthcare stocks. Buffett's decision to buy Bristol Myers and AbbVie and Merck and Pfizer may also be supported by their relatively favorable valuation. All four had forward price to earnings ratios that were near 10-year lows earlier this year, and none currently has a forward PE ratio above 15. So Buffett has been sitting on the sidelines during the outbreak, and he has actually underperformed the S&P 500. If we look at this year's performance, 
you are definitely better off if you kept investing in the S&P 500. Longer term though, it is a different story. Zoom out five years out, Berkshire wasn't doing so bad. If we switch to the 10 years outlook, then things are pretty even or slightly in favor of the S&P 500. I'm not suggesting Buffett is losing his mojo, but it is extremely difficult to beat the S&P 500 year after year even for the best investor of all time. Last but not least, Bitcoin is making the news as it reached almost the $19,000 mark, back to a level where we saw it in 2017. Lots of headlines about Bitcoin, even bold statements that Bitcoin will replace gold. Despite the gold reaching new highs, Bitcoin's growth has outpaced all investment assets this year. The market capitalization of Bitcoin is close to 2.5 to 2.75% of the gold market. In fact, if you read the news on sites like Coindesk, you will find all kinds of metrics where Bitcoin has already hit new all-time highs. If we look at the numbers, Bitcoin has been very volatile in the last three years. Back in 2017, we had the huge surge. And now this week, we almost got to those same levels and all-time highs. To put this in perspective, this week's high of 18,936 is in fact the 52-week high. The all-time high was on December 17 when we had Bitcoin at 20,089. We may get there this year as well. So if you bought Bitcoin at a lower price, you're probably pretty happy now seeing these valuations. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new today on investing. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to destroy the like button and as usual, if I missed anything, drop it down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, please subscribe for more videos and real investing advice. Check out some of my other videos from my investing playlist where I talk about the most important topics and teach you what to do. So until next time, stay the course and keep investing on a regular basis.